as Nigeria continues to deal with the economic implications of COVID-19 pandemic. The Consumer Price Index, also known as inflation rate, for the month of August 2020, accelerated by 13.22%. Now, according to the National Bureau of Statistics, the uh, nation's inflation rate recorded its biggest increase uh, so far this year since September 2019 and the highest in 28 months. A breakdown of the data uh, shows that the Consumer Price Index, which measures inflation, increased by 13.22% year-on-year in August 2020, with 0.40 percentage points higher than the rate recorded in July 2020, which is 12.82%. The Composite Food Index rose by 16% in August, compared to 15.48% in July. Uh, while urban inflation rate uh, increased by 13.83% year on year. In August 2020, from 13.40% recorded in July 2020, rural inflation increased by 12.65% in August 2020, from 12. 28% in July. The data also revealed that the rise in food index was caused by increases in prices of bread and cereals, potatoes, yam and other tubers, meat, fish, fruits, oil and fats and vegetables. I have joining me uh, now live to give an expert's insight into our conversation for today. He's a senior economist with SPM Professionals, Mr. Paul Alaji. Thank you very much for your time, Mr. Alaji. Thank you so very much for it's, having It's me. great to have you here live in the studio. Thank now, you so highest rate in about 28 months, uh, from 12.82 to 13.22. Uh, what were you expecting? What, did it come as a shock or were you expecting even more than this? 0.40% higher than what we had in August. It's kind of worrisome. Well, um, it's worrisome, but first of all, I, I must say that the expectation was about 13.5, so but it moderated to 13.22, which is much better than what, what, what um, analysts and economists were expecting for inflation's figure to be. When you look at the economic atmosphere, particularly what happened in August, we had a major shortfall in supply. August was planting, was uh, pre, the month before harvest season for some of the farm output that we expect. So even though there's um, harvest that has happened in September, we see a major challenge that may not necessarily reduce inflation when this month's report will be out. And those facts, I mean, things affecting inflation are so numerous. Unfortunately, right now, many of them are south, uh, within the South Territory for Nigeria. When I say so, I don't mean region, I mean within the negative territory for Nigeria. So what inflation has done, particularly for a lot of people watching us at home, who really does not know what does inflation mean? If you give me a minute, what it means is that if you have 1,000 Naira this time last year, August last year, you have 1,000 Naira, what 13.22, or to be charitable, say just 12% because of this example, is that your 1,000 Naira has reduced in value to 500 plus 200, plus 100, plus 50, plus 20, plus 10. You are short changed by almost 120 naira for 12%. Yeah. But in this case, we are talking of more than even 12%. We are talking of 13.22%. What? 130, 130, 132 naira, 20 cobalt. Yeah. That's what inflation has stolen. Even though you are still carrying 1,000 naira, it could no longer buy the same thing you have. And what is the evidence? Majority of Nigeria take sugar. What was sugar purchased in Oshodi last year, August? What is sugar purchased this year? Not my figures. According to Sugar Development Council, the figure has even increased more than 13.22%. Not my figure. Reports by National Bureau of Statistics also showed that airline inflation, food inflation, where you have rice, which increased that month, paddy rice input for meal was 32, was 130,000 per ton. What it is as at August last of this year was 175,000. You can calculate the gap, which is in fact more than 13.22 that we have. So when we say we have 13.22, it's still within, uh, it's, it's beat 
analyst expectation, uh, the, the rate we have. So generally, it's a lot of concern for us True. as a country that we, have, we are growing now negatively. We are not growing at all. We are having negative growth minus 6.1%. According to authority talking about National Bureau of Statistics, when you look at imports, when you look at how Nigeria have attracted investment, not my figures again, according to National Bureau of Statistics, supported by Central Bank of Nigeria, from over $4 billion that we attracted uh, in, in, in two quarters ago, last quarter we now have, in fact, less. We have about 25% of what we have before. No thanks to corona, I mean, coronavirus, the pandemic. No thanks to some policies that we have also made as an economy. So a lot of concerns here from urban to rural inflation, also to uh, food inflation, all of which have taken a major time. And for me, I think we need to review some of the policy. The, the champion here, the champion, the lead re rebel here is food inflation. Six, above 16%. It's even above the average of 13.22%. And if you ask, what are the major determinants for food inflation to be high? You talk about Nigeria's close border because we believe we are self-sufficient in terms of food production. Now, what happens to rice, which of course is major target of government? We have new meals coming up, but new meals that want to come up is having challenge with FX so that they could actually reduce the market of bag of rice in the market. Because when you don't have supply, meet up with demand, what you're going to have is increase in price. No, no, that no, no, said, no, let me, let me, allow me to put in. Uh, uh, now, the graphics are on air now shows uh, what we faced this year now from January to uh, the month of August. And the figures also there, uh, looking at what's been happening, it's been on that, uh, that, that increase. It's clear, as we can see, it, and it continues to go up. Paul, as we move to the end of the year, we see a lot of efforts. Central Bank has been coming out with a lot of... You, you've seen what's been happening. You're a player in all of this. Before we start looking for solutions, uh, you were talking about food, and I'm also worried about food because uh, food security is paramount. Yesterday, I spoke to an agriculturist, and I know what he said about if we can get the sector right, how beneficial it will be even in generating foreign exchange. What can we do at the moment, particularly agriculture? We've had lockdowns. We've had issues with disruption, the movement, transportation issues. Where do we go from here? I'm afraid we need to do beyond economic solution. We need to look at developmental solution. If we don't resolve significantly, insecurity in the north, we will still continue to have high food inflation. You see, you cannot clap with one hand. You need both hands. We sure. cannot be solving supply, demand side without solving supply side. Significant proportion of food production come from middle belt, meet north central, to the Hope not. In North Central today, we have several issues happening around farms, kidnapping, banditries, and all. I understand government is doing a lot, True. but I'm saying government may now need to look for another method. If the method we are adopting is not sufficient and is not quick enough, maybe, just maybe, government needs to start having conversation with different parties to ensure that we reduce insecurity in the north, we can have more people go to farm, more people get settled, and more food output. Apart from that, we need to connect farms to the market. And that's why I'm worried about the recent increase. Nigeria have decided to float uh, not just exchange rate, we have also decided to float uh, PMS, expecting that um, demand and supply will adjudicate prices. What it means is that it's like asking Anthony Joshua, the great boxer, of Nigerian origin and Mr. Macaroni, the man that always released <laughs> short skits on, 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 on yeah. social media, asking the two of them to fight, not comedy fight, but boxing fight. We all know that if, if the care is not taken, Mr. Macaroni may be nowhere to be found because <laughs> he wants to fight the world heavyweight champion. That is what it will mean for poor people. Nigerians who we are telling that they should be exposed to the influence of demand and supply. Why? Because whatever happens to global oil prices, we all want it to grow because we can have more revenue as government. But what happens to fixed income and particularly during the time of inf inflation? What happens to police constables whose income are determined up to DPU and all or everyone that is civil servant, I'm talking of even people that work in private sector, whose income cannot automatically be adjusted. It also affects businesses because inflation becomes disincentive when commodity prices are higher. People may not want to buy. So it is not gain for everybody. And we are not talking of single-digit inflation here. We are talking of 
13.22. For me, as we mentioned, Central Bank has done a lot. Central Bank has the magic figure. It tried it in 2016 when it drove that inflation from up high 18% down to about 12% and later to 11%. Now, all stakeholders need to work to agree with Central Bank. And I want President Buari perhaps to create a, an economic coordination center so that fiscal authority and, and monetary, monetary authority, system. I understand they may be communicating, but this communication at this point in time is not sufficient. We are talking of agriculture and we need to boost farm. We are also talking about imports. If you check now, Nigeria wants to import more farm. M seems to be relatively scarce for people to fill because of limited FX, only $36 billion. And $36 billion that we have foreign reserve may not be liquid cash. It could also include gold assets. So how do we sell gold for people you want to import? So that's another conversation entirely. We were able to come out of in 2016 because Nigeria borrowed significantly, but the impact of borrowing is already coming on us, according to debt management office. Not my figures. Report release shows that our foreign debt grew to about 31 billion dollars. And yeah. why 31 trillion naira? I beg your trillion. pardon. And when you look at only uh, the foreign components of the debt, when you find the difference between what we had at the end of last, I mean, uh, 2019, the Q4, compared to what we have now, you significantly see, because of devaluation, Nigeria had debt 964 billion naira by borrowing out money. These are not my figures. These are figures induced from the release of debt management office, the website www.dmo.gov.ng. Now, when you put plus and minus together, you see different government agencies want to achieve results. President Buhari wants to leave le legacy. One thing is missing, coordination. I think the president, maybe through his economic advisory committee or through any organization he might so at trust. I want to believe that we need that coordination where different agencies of government can see how to connect farms to the market, how to connect education to market, how to combine that, uh, how to provide those connections so that we can drive down exchange rates, not just that, we can have increase in food supply and we can use so many methods. You can control inflation so many ways. I understand that we also have one of the lowest in recent time, NPR. Now people are saying maybe this has informed the increase in inflation. Record the NPR before it was reduced was 13.5 using the same parameter and now it has been reduced, uh, on, I think on, uh, uh, it has been reduced to a about 12.5 percent yeah. from 13.5 percent. Now the question is, could there have been NPR that that induced inflation reduction in NPR? I beg to disagree, but it's also something we look at. And I'm happy that Monetary Policy Committee is meeting. They might just want to increase NPR. That was one of the buttons that were put in 2016 when sure, NPR sure was increased. The, the concern now is that we have issues of growth. Issues of growth was, in fact, is more than triple of what we had in 2016, uh, which was, of course, not up to minus 4%. What we have now is minus 6.1%. And we all know that this is already a recession period. You know why? We are only, we, we know, the reason is because you cannot suddenly grow out of minus. When you look at our pattern of growth, it has been very slow, slow. but steady. However, with minus 6%, definitely we will go up. Are we going to go up to positive territory? That is, that is not possible right now. So we will have possibly a U-shape I mean, uh, recession. Recovery. And if we are not careful, it might be an L-shape. That is why we need to put it all together. I don't think it's the right time to completely implement electricity tariff increase. I also don't think it's the right time to completely 100% implement to deregulate that sector. Now, deregulation is important because it's a major block stopping, I mean, uh, um, stopping block for government revenue. I also think government can do that in phases. I believe government can significantly say 25% of every quarter. So whatever it is, government will only intervene by 75, now, 50, that, that, and 25%. Then government can leave his hand Now, Mr. Laje, we, we can have. see key determinants now of inflation in the country. Purchasing power of Nigerians obviously dropped. Forex scarcity. scarcity. Fiscal monetary policies, Naira devaluation, increase in food price, electricity price, fuel price hike, increase in VAT, quoting interest rates, excess liquidity. These are about 10 uh, points there now, uh, you know, that we, we're, we're looking at. Now, now look
look at all of this. Uh, there, are, there are real concerns. Be concerned. With all of this, even the BDCs have now been supplied with Forex, but we still see that Naira is still running behind the greenback. Look at what has been happening. About 460, 470 Naira at uh, the parallel market. And people need to source for this fund. Importation of this blocked. Interpretation of that. So what do you think? What do you make of all of these determinants now, of inflation? When you look factors? at all the determinants, what has changed? Hmm. Out of the 10, nothing. As we speak, electricity tariff increase is still there. Uh, deregulation is going on. Now, most of these policies are not bad when you look at them theoretically. However, when you look at the peculiarity of our people, and if you want numbers, according to UNDP, over 80 million Nigerians are living under multidimensional poverty. These are not my figures, but UNDP said so. And this is, I'm not saying that Nigeria are just poor today. That's not what I'm saying. I know that over the years, in fact, there was a time we had over 120 million Nigerians that are poor. So when we say we have 80 million Nigerians that are poor, we are not saying they just suddenly became poor. My worry again is that President Buhari has a vision. He announced to us 12th of July, 2019, that his goal is to leave 100 million Nigerians out of yeah. poverty. Yeah. Something that interests me so very much. And I felt his concern about seeing that a lot of Nigerians are poor. But what policy are we going to promote to leave Nigeria out of poverty? When we know that we cannot ask Nigerians to suddenly compete. So instead of wanting Nigeria to have equal results, I think what we should create is equal opportunity. So that Nigeria can compete, even though they are not as strong as those who are well-to-do, but those who are poor among us can have similar opportunity within their space. And this will come when we look at what are the major determinants that, we, there are, that they are having issues with. I tell you, manufacturers today that want to set up, they have issue of FX. Where are they going to have access from? If they don't set up, how do you employ more people? Which exactly is the vision of government? I understand there is high level, highest level of scarcity of FX, not because government don't want to release FX, but because of crude. So this is what I, 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 will stop, I would like to stop with. When you look at our economic pattern, why has FX suddenly disappeared? It has disappeared because almost everyone watching us today, the device they are using to watch us with, the television, is possibly important. YouTube, if they are watching us on YouTube, is possibly important. If we are streaming live on any social media platform, those platforms are not also made in Nigeria. So most of the ad that goes on those platforms, the Nigerians, if Nigeria is advertising on it, it will be converted to FX and also leave Nigeria again. So this is huge worry that we have. We need to convert our economy before we convert our currency. How do we convert our economy from primary-based economy to secondary before we talk about tre I mean, treasury? What we have seen is we have collapsed secondary sector, where you have processing, which is where you have manufacturing. Why? According to the National Bureau of Statistics, not my figures, almost 20% of Nigerian economic activities in agriculture, but huge 55% is in service. What are you servicing? When you have collapsed the secondary sector, where is, I mean, manufacturing is, is, is almost 10% or less than 10%. You cannot sustain that service sector with manufacturing. That is why 2019, second quarter alone, five banks in Nigeria were exposed to oil and gas primary sector yeah, up to 6.125 trillion naira, 30% of which have become non-performing loan. Imagine if 6.125 trillion naira from five top banks have been given to SMEs. What do you think we have in terms of employment? Mm. We would have expanded our economy. So mm. it is us cutting our nose and saying that we still want to look beautiful. I think we can ask Mike Ty uh, Michael Jackson of blessed memory what became the report. <laughs> Let's leave it on that very interesting note. Paul Laje is always interesting having you on the show. Thank you very much uh, for your time and making us understand what these figures mean and even for the man on the street to understand the impact. It's very important. Thank you again, uh, senior economist at SPM Professionals. Thank you so much for having me. All right, Dave.